Today, there are four Mozarabic churches in Toledo, all of Visigoth origin from the 6th and 7th centuries. They are St. Eulalia, St. Justa and Rufina, St. Lucas, and St. Sebastian. The first two are hidden in the Old Town, but St. Lucas and St. Sebastian are located on the edge of the cornice. There are Mudejar temples with three naves, with horseshoe arches on capitals and reused Visigoth and Roman shafts. Later reforms have added Renaissance or Baroque chapels. The Rite Mozarabe is a very ancient liturgy from the first centuries of Christianity, collected by Saint Isidoro and practiced in medieval Spain. The Mozarabic Christian cult remained active, although in minority, during the Muslim domination and its practice continues nowadays, having special permission from the Holy See in Rome. The Roman authorities abolished it in the 9th century, but unlike Europe, Islamic Spain remained isolated from its influence, keeping Christianism as practiced in the 8th century. At least six Christian churches continued in Toledo under the authority of a bishop, although they spoke and wrote in Arabic to the point of forgetting their Latin Gothic alphabet. In the 12th century, many Mozarabics arrived in Toledo from the south, but later the Mozarabic liturgy would have been extinguished little by little if it had not received the encouragement of the Cardinal Cisneros, who recovered the Gothic codices and built the Mozarabic chapel in the cathedral. For this reason, the Mozarabic Mass in Toledo can be heard today, and through it you can feel the weight of the centuries and the transcendence of Christianity and history. In this sensitivity, the poet Rilke wrote from Toledo to his friend the sculptor Rodin, On Sundays I go to a small Mozarabic parish to hear a salve that may well be a thousand years old. There are other churches of interest in Toledo. The Chapel San Jose was designed by Nicolas de Vergara Young in the 16th century. El Greco painted the works of Saint Joseph and the Boy and the Coronation of the Virgin for this place. The Church of San Ildefonso is located on a hill of the city and therefore its towers and its great dome emerge on the skyline. It was built in the 17th and 18th centuries in the manner of the Jesuit churches, following the model of the Jesu in Rome. The front is monumental Baroque, organized as an altarpiece with two bell towers on the sides, from which you can see a panoramic view of the rooftops of Toledo. The Church of the Gaitanas, of Baroque interior, has an impressive campus of the Immaculate by Francisco de Ricci. In addition to churches and convents, Toledo retains remarkable civil buildings raised at the request of noble families or the archbishops in their social function, in addition to the institutions that govern the city. The Town Hall is a Renaissance building designed by Herrera and Nicolas de Vergara Young and finished by Jorge Manuel, the son of El Greco. The Archiepiscopal Palace was ordered to be built by the Archbishop Jiménez de Rada, who promoted the cathedral in the 13th century. It has subsequently undergone numerous reforms. Its facade along with that of the town hall and cathedral, leave an open space, which today is embellished by a fountain by Cristina Iglesias. The Brotherhood was a structure of citizen militia created by the Catholic kings to protect trade, allowing quick judgments of criminals and assailants of roads. There were previously medieval brotherhoods of local scope between the rivers Tagus and Guadiana, but now they are endowed with general rules and shared responsibility that could punish arbitrariness. It occupied the building that today is known as Brotherhood House.
El Greco House Museum is in a house renovated in the 20th century by the Marquis of Vega Inclán in the style of the 16th century. Later, he donated it to the state along with its collection of paintings. It is located in the area of the Marquis de Villena houses where El Greco lived. There are several El Grecos there. The view and plan of Toledo, the tears of St. Peter, a complete apostolate, and the portrait of Diego de Covarrubias that El Greco made based on the one by Sanchez Coelho, shown next in an interesting comparison of styles. We can also see works from the El Greco workshop, as well as Sorolla with the portrait of the Marquis himself. Donceas Noble School was founded by the Archbishop Siliceo in the 16th century for teaching girls with pure blood. The school and the tomb of its founder, now located in the center of the Baroque Church, were both moved to the building that we see today. Its beautiful cloister was reformed in the 18th century by Ventura Rodriguez. Cardinal Siliceo was also responsible for the Infant School, founded to educate children in the Cathedral Choir. The Hospital of the Nuncio was created at the end of the 15th century to welcome the mentally ill, being one of the first in Europe dedicated to that purpose. It reached such fame that the false Quixote of Avellanda ends his days in it, and Quevedo refers ironically to it as an accommodation for poets who pass through Toledo. From its patience, El Greco seems to have been inspired when painting his apostolates. At the end of the 18th century, Cardinal Lorenzana commissioned Ignacio Han, disciple of Sabatini, a new hospital for the mentally ill, the new Nuncio. Despite being a remarkable neoclassical building, the current administrative use prohibits even admiration of its staircase unless you have pending issues with the regional tax agency. The other great neoclassical building of Ignacio Han in Toledo is the University of Lorenzana, with huge columns in its front and in the interior courtyard, like a Greek temple, located in the center of the old town. There are recently built Neomudejar buildings of interest in Toledo. One of them is the School of Arts and Crafts, and the other is the railway station of Claveria, made with great care in decorative arts in wood, tile, and wrought iron in the ticket offices. The major seminary and the bullring are also Neomudejar, which, although surpassed in monumentality and fame by others, we could say that in Toledo, a Neomudejar bullring is at home. The Benecazon Palace is the result of a reconstruction that preserves some Mudejar plasterwork from the 16th century and two Islamic capitals from the 10th century on the facade. The sculptor Victorio Macho donated to Toledo his work and his house located on top of the Tarpeya rock, from where you can see an impressive panoramic view of the river, the San Martin Bridge, and the Cigarras. Currently, it is a museum where his works are exhibited, among which stand out the sculptures of his mother and his brother, as well as the busts of various well-known personalities. Its beautiful inner courtyard is today coarsened by booths and lockers of administrative function. In order to revitalize the sector of knives, Carlos III commissioned to Sabatini the construction of a white arms factory in the low fertile plain. In its pavilions, university classes are taught today. The origin of the Toledo swords is unknown but they already had fame in Roman times. The prestige was reached between the 10th and 16th century due to its qualities. 
robust and flexible at the same time, achieved through a careful tempering technique. The industry of knives and swords declined with the apogee of firearms, whose great power was initially considered ignoble. El Quixote refers to them as a diabolical invention which gave cause to an infamous and cowardly arm to take the life of a courageous knight. Toledo's cigarrales are Latin villas located around the city whose construction, between rustic and recreational, is fully integrated into the environment. Traditionally, olive, almonds, and fruit trees were planted on its farms. Cigarrales are attributed to an agricultural origin in the Arab period. The growth of the population led to the expansion of the cultivation area over the hills around the river. Later, in the 16th century, beautiful recreational villas were built on these estates as places of leisure and enjoyment of nature. Quite a few cigarrales have had illustrious residents, but among all should be highlighted the Cigarral de Menores, for its prominence in the Spanish cultural life. This cigarral was built in the 16th century, drawn by Monegro, and was later occupied by the order of the Clerigos Menores, from which it acquired its name. The building was abandoned after the confiscation. Dr. Gregorio Marañón, historian and essayist, bought it in 1921 and refurbished it, respecting as much as possible the original drawing by Monegro. From there you can enjoy a splendid panoramic view of Toledo. An open-minded and welcoming mentality of Dr. Marañón and his family turned his cigarral into a meeting place for intellectuals of all kinds, including universal scientists such as Alexander Fleming and Marie Curie. The list of visitors hosted in Cigarral de Menores by Dr. Marañón leaves you open-mouthed with admiration because it represents the cream of the 20th century Spanish intellectuals. Uraballén, García Lorca, Valle Inclán, Ortega y Gasset, Menéndez Pidal, Zuluaga, Eugenio Dors, Pérez de Ayala, Juan Ramón Jiménez, Gómez de la Serna, Sánchez Albornoz, Azorín, Madariaga, Vicente Alisandre, Gerardo Diego, Victorio Macho, José María Cosío, Camilo José Cela, González Ruano, Luis Rosales, Lain Entralgo, Chueca Goitia, Andrés Segovia, Teresa Berganza, Díaz Plaja y el torero Juan Belmonte. Gregorio Marañón wrote from his cigarral in Toledo many of his works, but the most typical about this city was written in his exile in Paris wrapped in a lucid nostalgia. Based on the inspiration of the praise and nostalgia of Toledo by Gregorio Marañón, we can weave the truest of the Toledo legends, because Toledo was not always there, but came from the east through the Mediterranean and wanted to travel to the north. During the tough journey of Castile, it fell exhausted next to the Tagus. When the river embraced it, it decided to stay, but managed to reach the north through its old books, and thus shed Eastern culture in the West. Centuries later, it spread that culture through the river, so that its waters would take it to the ocean, and, through it, to the New World, to the Plus Ultra. Leaving Toledo forever pinned to the rock by five daggers, the four tips of the Alcazar, and the cathedral tower spire.